thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you, everyone, again, participating in this international forum on technology sovereignty and critical uh, technology today. I'm Professor Jung Dong Lee at Seoul National University and the uh, principal coordinator of this event. Also, I'm leading a research center of the future of science and technology at SNU Institute for Future Strategy. Today's meeting uh, invites Korean and foreign experts on technology sovereignty to discuss the concrete meaning and definition of technology sovereignty and the direction of future international collaboration in this issue. Uh, before starting the forum, I'd like to invite welcome remarks from those who have led and supported us. First, I'd like to invite uh, <coughs> a welcoming remark from the Honorary Director of the SNU Institute for Future Strategy, Ban Ki-moon, the former UN Secretary General. Thank you for your warm introduction. Professor Byung-yeon Kim, Director of Institute of Future Strategy, Dr. Byung-il Che, President of Korea Foundation for Advanced Studies, Dr. Jakob Edler, Director of Fraunhofer, Institute of Systems and Innovation Research, Professor Jung Dong Lee, Technology Management, Economics, and Policy Program of Seoul National University, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is my great privilege to deliver these congratulatory remarks at this impressive international forum on technologies, sovereignty, and strategic technology. Nowadays, strategic competition between the U.S. and China is a focal point in current global affairs. I am concerned that this competition is now developing into confrontation, and many scholars have characterized today's U.S.-China relationship as a new type of Cold War. Whatever characterization it may be, the bottom line is that we are facing the grim reality of intensifying technological competition between the two powers, as well as the rapid reorganization of global supply chains. Against this troubling backdrop, many experts agree that it will be difficult to expect a return to the same collaborative system of a worldwide division of labor and technology as we enjoyed in the past. They argue that now is the time to seek a due balance and direction. In this regard, today's topic of technology sovereignty is indeed both timely and relevant, and I am confident that this forum will provide a robust opportunity to find a due balance and chart a new sustainable direction forward. In particular, Korea is geographically surrounded by technologically advanced countries and is closely linked to the global value chain. So a guiding strategy for securing its own technological sovereignty is much more important than any other country. We have achieved impressive economic development based on international cooperation, which has been underpinned by fundamental values of liberalism and democracy. And we have realized remarkable economic success through a system of open trade. However, a my country first policy amidst growing confrontation between the US and China is emerging as a new geopolitical trend. This trend is being applied even between friendly countries such as Korea and Japan. Therefore, 
Every country is more interested in technological sovereignty and economic independence rather than interdependence in today's era of uncertainty. Accordingly, the Institute of Future Strategy at Seoul National University, where I am honored to serve as honorary director, is concentrating on economic security as one of its six key areas for studying. I am pleased to note that the Fraunhofer Institute for Systems and Innovation Research, ISI, in Germany is participating in this forum. Germany is a leading country in the discussion on European technological sovereignty. Moreover, it stimulates the larger international discussion on technological sovereignty and critical technologies. Therefore, these prominent organizations synthesize broader international discussion on technological sovereignty and are working towards the creation of a consensus on the strategic direction of Korea and Germany. In addition, leading U.S. experts will join this forum to add their insights on critical technologies. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, one thing I firmly believe we must keep in mind is the fact that no singular country today can possess all of the cutting-edge technologies and all of the supply chains. With this in mind, I truly hope that this forum will provide a sound direction for the implication of technological sovereignty. And this should ultimately be based on cooperation that enables the world to prosper together, not on the interest of a specific country. Before I conclude, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all the esteemed experts who are participating in this forum and have made this such a meaningful event. I wish you all the best and pray for the success of the forum. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, I'd like to ask uh, for a welcoming remark from Professor Byung-Yeon Kim, the director of the SNU Institute for Future Strategy, which is the uh, hosting organization of this event. Uh, on behalf of the Institute for Future Strategy at the Seoul National University, I'm so glad uh, to co-host the International Forum on Critical Technologies and Technology Sovereignty uh, together with the uh, Fraunhof Institute for Systems and Innovation Research and the Korea Foundation for Advanced Studies. I would like to extend my warm welcome to all participants in this forum, especially to uh, those coming from abroad, including Professor Jacob Adler, Professor William Bombillian, uh, Professor Nicholas Borotas, and Professor Henning Kroll. As all of us agree, uh, technology has been key to developing human civilization, leading industrial revolutions, and improving the welfare of society. Uh, moreover, countries have uh, co-integrated uh, co <coughs> through the diffusion of technology. Uh, unfortunately, however, this era of uh, shared technological innovation across the borders is gravely challenged by current uh, geopolitical situations. The name of our institute is the Institute for a Future Strategy, IFS, a fitting abbreviation uh, since our purpose is to plan for the ifs uh, in the world. If Russia uses nuclear weapon against Ukraine, if China becomes more aggressive toward the outside world, including Taiwan, if the rivalry between the United States and China 
involves more confrontation rather than cooperation. Technological sovereignty could be an important instrument, not only to guarantee uh, national integrity, but also to deter aggression and to maintain the world order. However, we all hope and believe that the, the best way that the world should aim for is to reconstruct free and borderless cooperation on technology and innovation. Uh, in this regard, I believe today's forum, inviting experts from Germany, the United States, and South Korea, is very timely and fruitful. I sincerely congratulate on today's event. Thank you so much. Um, uh, next, uh, I'd like to invite Professor Byung Il Che, President of the Korea Foundation for Advanced Studies, uh, who supported this forum in many ways. Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and distinguished guests. Welcome to KFS. Well, it's my extreme pleasure to host and co-organize this forum on critical technology and sovereignty. Well, looking back uh, in your early days, whoever thought we we're going to discuss this topic? I tried to put today's uh, gathering in proper context. It was last winter, as I recall, a week before Putin invaded Ukraine. I met Professor Lee Jung Dong at SNU Winter Campus. We discussed about this idea of hosting forum under which we discuss sovereignty, not just economic sovereignty, technological sovereignty, but as economists who study the beauty of divisional labors and compared advantage, we are accustomed to think in terms of the best way of enhancing sovereignty is by increasing interdependence, not in independence. That old convention is about to be severely challenged. And just a week after our meeting with Professor Lee, Putin invaded Ukraine, and the war is prolonged and still going on. And Germany is uh, revealing how it is critically dangerous to rely its critical segment economy on so-called unreliable partners. So here we are. Well, so today, forum is going to put a cast, all this discussion to the fore, and we have interesting mix of economists and political scientists and technological uh, experts. And so because you are at uh, KFES and KFES conference hall, I'd like to uh, briefly introduce you to what we are all about KFES. Because KFES is not a think tank, unlike Institute for Future Strategy. We are based on uh, scholarship. So 47 years ago, very visionary young Korean businessman who thought, well, even if Korea was uh, living through very poverty-stricken and war-torn country, but future in 21st century is going to be different. And when countries are advancing and rising to certain advanced global country, then country is going to full of new problem, which require expertise. And under that vision, he selected the finest young college kid and sent to abroad, mainly to the US top-notch institutions, including Harvard, MIT, Yale, Princeton, Stanford, and so on and so forth. And amazing thing is that private organizations and pursuing social value has been doing this in 48 years and keep doing it. So as a, as a result, we have helped to create and helped to achieve 850 PhD from those top-notch institutions. So if you're interested in uh, taking a break, in the back room of this conference hall, you see a statue of our founder and all these names, including mine as well. But coming into 21st century, uh, we, KFES, and I'm in charge of KFES, we are dreaming something new dreams. Because the world has moved on, and especially Korea as affluent society, and also country with dynamic uh, business, 
These young generations, they are not interested in pursuing academic career as before, which means that they may be future business leaders, political leaders, and, uh, and so on and so forth. So we try to create a new dream for those future generations. In this very room, this April, we invited, we had a fortunate inviting speaker from Sweden and politicians, and they met with early 20 Korean college students we had very enlightening discussion on future democracy. There was a blowing moment and there was a transforming moment. So I wish you know, today's event is going to be very first in the beginning, but many future will uh, follow. So I wanna say sometime in the future, we're going to have minds, meeting of minds between expert and future generation where we can together discuss what kind of future they want to create, how we can help them. So without further ado, I will uh, end my uh, welcoming remark, but because you be here with us all day, and please you know, allow your time and to look around this institution, and also I have my staff, my colleague who are helping me with those uh, dream, and so if time proper, then I will introduce them. Thank you very much, enjoy the conference, thank you. Today, uh, we have Fraunhofer Institute uh, for Systems and Innovation Research as one of the core hosting organization. And then I'd like, I wanted to in invite uh, Dr. Uh, Jacob Edler, uh, who is leading the institute. Good morning, everybody. Warm welcome. Uh, yes, I'm co-organizing this intellectually, I guess, but I think, uh, thank you very much, J.D. Lee, because uh, you have been the, the powerhouse for the organization of all of this, we have, to, we have to admit, so we are very, very grateful. My colleague Henning Groll and myself, we are very grateful to be here for all kinds of reasons. Korea, I said it to, to, to one of you in the, uh, during coffee, is a fascination somehow for, for, for Germans. The, the, the journey you have made in the last 20 or 30 years is something we really want to understand better, and now we, maybe we can have a, a joint journey in the future, even more than we had in the, in the past. Now, very short uh, remarks, because I will have a longer, a longer talk later on what I think is technology sovereignty, but, but uh, why are we here today? I mean, first of all, we are here because we are academics, and we have a long-standing relationship also with Washington and, 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 and SNU and, and Fraunhofer. We've, we, we are interested in the role of the state when it comes to STI uh, development and technological competitiveness and innovation systems. Uh, and, and, but at the very end, it's not only about the economy, it's also about societal welfare. So that is where we, are, where, where we come from. That's what, what our interest is. And now there are two drivers for the topics today, as, as I see it, that's my interpretation. One is, one is we have this global urgencies. We, we, know all, we know all this, so it's climate change, but not only, we have, we have the SDGs, we have all, all of that, and we know that we can only solve the problems of this world by international cooperation and interdependence. The term was used, I think, five or six times now by, by all of you. Interdependence is more, we need more than ever in terms of, of solve our global problems. And just when we need it more than ever, we go in the other direction. We have all these geoeconomics and geopolitical disruptions that we will certainly talk about, and the reasons, the reasons for those are very complex, but there seems to be a dynamic now out there that runs counter what we actually need, which is more interdependence. So we are, we are, we are faced with a real dilemma at the moment. So what is our role then? I mean, we are not politicians. We don't take any decisions. But what we can do, and that is what we have to do, and we've discussed it yesterday evening in a small circle of, of friends here, is to try to, 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 uh, to underpin all this with, with conceptual clarity and with being clear what does it all mean and what is it states and national governments can and should do in order to, to, to solve somehow that dilemma between we need more interdependence and we seem to go towards, uh, towards less. So for me, this forum is... is, is one step, of course, only, not more than that, but one step to try to, to come to a bit more clarity. What does technology sovereignty actually mean? And, and Ban Ki-moon, who gave a wonderful introduction, and I'm very grateful for that, of course, um, he seems to, 
to understand, or he, he understands the danger of the term technology sovereignty, I think, which has this kind of connotation of autonomy and doing it yourself, and as if technology sovereignty would be a counter part of or the opposite of interdependence. And that is exactly not what we think technology sovereignty should be, and I will discuss that later, but it's not autonomy, it is uh, making sure that you can govern your own system uh, uh, with your own authority, but interdependent with others. So that is a different thing than from autonomy, and I will, we will dis dis uh, discuss that. We, will, we have to be very careful, and that's why I'm so grateful that you took the initiative, JD, to do that, that we don't throw out uh, the baby of international interdependence with the bathwater of, 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 of autonomy. Uh, that, is, that would really be a real, a real problem. So, so therefore, there is a normative urge, not only in academic interest, there is a normative urge of all of us to contribute to better understanding, to, 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 to go towards the interdependence we need for, for solving our, our global problems. It's not only about our national economies. It's, it's about much more than that, and we have to be very, very clear about that, because technology serves a purpose that is beyond economic growth. So I'm very grateful that we are here today and to discuss all these kind of issues. And uh, let me finish by thanking uh, again uh, the speaker before me, the former secretary of the UN, of course, and the honorary director of SNU Institute for Future Strategy, which I think is a fantastic initiative from all I know, Ban Ki-moon, uh, for, his, for his very insightful guidance. Uh, let me also thank the director of, of the SNU uh, Institute for Future, Future Strategies for uh, Byung Yon for your efforts uh, to lead the various international initiatives as far as I know of them. And of course, this includes a lot of innovation issues that are of, of such a critical importance. Let me also thank, of course, and we've just shortly discussed, the president of the Co Korean Foundation for Advanced Studies, Joy Byung Il, uh, for, for your generous support. Without you, this would not be uh, this forum would not be possible. And last, but of course not least, uh, Professor Jung Dong Lee for, for all your foresight to bring all these critical uh, issues now on the table today. And I wish us all a, a very fruitful discussion today. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. The, uh, this forum consists of three uh, sessions. And we will start our first session, and then th this first session uh, will start at 10, uh, five minutes break. And then uh, the first session will be led by Professor uh, Son. After five minutes, we will start. <laughs>